Hi, MJ from flipnormals.com, and today I'm taking you through some of the most exciting features and updates in Blender 4.0. First up, a highly requested feature, light linking. Light linking allows you to better direct your lights in your scenes, and it's used all the time in production. You can now light your characters or assets exactly as you like, without any bounce or bleed from unwanted lights. There's also an option to shadow link for even greater control. Aside from that, there have been minor updates to the point, spot, area and sunlight. They now work a little differently for better compatibility with other renders. You can now create your own node tools, which are shareable and don't require any Python. This is massive as it opens up geometry nodes to a whole new audience. Your tools can now live in the asset browser, which makes them easily accessible and reusable. A really cool feature is being able to use them as operators directly from the viewport. Here, you'll also be able to expose the values to modify them while in edit mode to tweak things in real time. The last thing for geometry nodes is the introduction of repeat zones. This easily allows you to repeat actions in your nodes, making iterative nodes extremely powerful. HEX has been introduced and is now the default view transform, and this affects everyone using Blender going forward. Unless you want to stick to filming, of course. AGX provides better color accuracy with truer collapsing colors. This means no hue shifting as colored lights intensify. This gives us richer colors in general and is especially noticeable with intensely colored lights. There's also a new and exciting node called Kuwahara, which reduces noise while preserving edges. It makes for a great painterly effect and there's a good amount of adjustability with both the classic and anisotropic options. Now for the UI. First off, we have collapsible shaders. This is probably something everyone will notice right off the bat. It's more compressed, which makes it easier to work with in the shader editor. This extends to the compressed modifier view, which is also searchable now. Mesh edit overlays are now in their own popover with per item statistics. It just helps separate out some of the options that cluttered the overlays in previous versions. The default font has changed, as well as improved text selection. A big thing here is that you can now select text outside the text block. And finally for the UI, the color picker works outside the Blender window, which might sound trivial, but it actually ends up saving you a ton of time when you're trying to color match. Aside from being able to better organize your shaders because it's collapsible, there have been updates to a variety of inputs on the BSDF shader. Sheen has been updated to better simulate fabric and now works for dust as well. Coat, which was previously clear coat, is now more versatile and can be used for more than just a clear coat. There's improved SSS for skin. This includes an attached IOR input for more realistic behavior, which is only accessible for the skin specific random walk. It'll now also be using the base color as an input instead of three separate colors. Normal map handling has also been updated to better deal with those pesky black spots you could get when you were adjusting the strength before. Multi-scatter GGX is now more efficient, which also means that it's the default option. It's introduced better energy conservation, so old materials might look a little different. Some might be lighter and some might be darker. And finally, new inputs for the noise texture node. These just help you adjust your output better to your liking. And this goes for the Voronoi node as well. Incremental saving was introduced, which is great for working with versions. There have been general improvements to the USD, 3DS, OBJ, and Collada formats. This includes OBJ import export, which is now native instead of an add-on. We're also able to export with a bunch of different grouping options, which makes sorting complex models a lot more manageable on import. Now two transform updates that I think everyone will benefit from. Snapping while transforming can now be done with the B key. You can snap to edges, vertices, faces in no time at all. You can also navigate while transforming by holding down the Alt key. Then we have some big improvements to the animation playback as well as the graph editor. This is especially helpful with complex key data, like if you're working with mocap, for instance. Finally, some hotkeys were changed, but you'll have to check the release notes for a comprehensive list on that, as there are just too many to go over in this video. And there we go. I hope this gave you a comprehensive look at what you can expect from this new release of Blender. I didn't cover everything, but I do encourage you to check out the release notes if you want to geek out on all of them. Now go download Blender if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.